Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to Tesla Talk Wednesday, I guess, technically. So I didn't film yesterday because Tesla had earnings today after the bell, which means... Yeah, that's right. Welcome back to the Tesla guys, but more importantly, more importantly, more importantly, Tesla reported earnings today after the bell. They finally came out probably around like 3, or sorry, like 4.50ish Eastern Standard Time. Uh, conference calls at 6.30, so we still got about an hour before the conference call. Probably not going to cover that in this vlog, but maybe we'll see. That's why I wanted to wait a day for Tesla Talk Tuesday because I was just excited for earnings. No point in talking about it. I guess I could have made two videos. But either way, earnings, they missed on revenue, but they had a huge surprise beat on actual profit. So earnings per share, they came in at like a dollar eighty something, I believe, and they were expected to have a loss of 42 cents. So their gross margins improved to like 22.9%, somewhere around there. Don't quote me on that. Sorry, I'm just trying to memorize all these numbers. Either way, gross margins improved, which means that even on uh, about the same revenue as last quarter, they were able to obviously make a profit on that. Um, so this is awesome news for Tesla as a company, uh, for shareholders. I, I am a shareholder, small disclaimer there. I do own some Tesla stock. Um, and there's probably gonna be a huge short squeeze in the stock. Well, it's probably already happening after hours, but it will probably continue tomorrow and the rest of the week. Potentially, maybe, we'll see. Depends how the conference call goes. My understanding is the conference call. We are looking for model three, I guess production in China, the Shanghai Gigafactory. That's up and running. They were waiting on some, uh... let's actually go back inside. It's kind of hot in the garage, but either way. Ah, so, good news, good news. It's always good to be a Tesla shareholder. Anyways, um, so the conference call, I think the, the key things to know on the conference call are gonna be uh, like future projections. Uh, so my understanding is they already came out and said that they are clearly on track to hit the $360,000. That was like the minimum that they were going to produce in cars this year. So reassured guidance on that. Obviously, they posted a profit, slight miss on revenue. Some other key things, though, on the call, I believe that they're going to give more like Model Y numbers as far as like a definitive date of starting production, things like that. In addition to Shanghai Gigafactory, when they're going to start production, potential production numbers, maybe how many they've already produced, all that stuff. So that should be interesting and things to note and listen for. Now, I'm very excited for the Tesla Roadster to come out, but obviously Elon Musk has spoken to this. He said it's going to be delayed. The truck, the truck is still supposed to be announced, I believe, according to Elon and some tweets in the last two or three months. The truck is still going to be announced in November. So maybe he'll talk about that on the call. Maybe he won't. Still very excited for the truck to come out. Uh, I really want to see what this will look like. However, you know that's not going to be delivered for, what, four or five years from now at least? I don't know. It could be sooner, but that's just my guess. Um, all these timelines are farther and farther out. Uh, the Roadsters was projected to be like three years out. It was supposed to come out next year, but I can't imagine they're going to roll it out next year. They're trying to hit better and better margins, better production numbers, and the way to do that is with cars like the Model 3 and the Model Y. So I assume they're going to roll those out have some nice profits before they actually start producing and really getting get into the roads to production. Uh, my guess is that, as we know, Tesla, Porsche competing, they're gonna come out with the Model S and X Plaid drivetrain, which will have three drive units, two, one on each front wheel, so two up front, one in the back, and they'll probably come out with those cars before they come out with the Roadster. Uh, so maybe we'll see that by the end of 2020, but the Roadster, I can't imagine that coming out before 2021. However, there was some interesting news related to the Tesla Roadster, and that was from their chief of design, I believe. Um, I never get his name right. Fra Fra Franz? Fra Franz? Franz? So I decided to look it up. Franz von Holzhausen? I, I'm, I'm butchering that. Either way, I, I believe he's their chief of design. He came out and said the prototype, or sorry, the actual car will be significantly better than the prototype. To quote exactly what he said in a recent interview, it will be even better than what we unveil unveiled in every way. So that is very cool. And I think that part of that is going to be from learning from the Model S Plaid drivetrain that they were supposedly testing at the Nürburgring. I'm very excited for that. So that is very very cool stuff who knows if they'll actually have like those cold air thrusters the spacex package uh that elon musk referenced but hopefully they do because that would be pretty sweet uh just imagine 
you can essentially accelerate the car if it was in neutral. So if you think about it that way, you get acceleration from the motors and the tires, uh, as well as cold air thrusters. I mean, you could be doing like one second zero to sixties, less than that. Anyways, uh, the point is the car I'm even more excited for, and it gives me more time to save because I cannot afford that car right now. $200,000 base price, $250,000 for the Founder series, which is I think the first 1,000 cars or 1,500 cars. Um, so yeah, it's a little bit out of budget. But if the car doesn't come out for like three years, it gives me some time to save, buy more Tesla stock, catch these big pops. So the stock was trading at like 254 today as of market close. It's up like 17% last I checked, close to $300 a share. So we're looking good. The stock is skyrocketing. It's gonna be an awesome short squeeze. They're posting profitability. This is very exciting. If you can't tell, very excited about this. Uh, super cool. I'm glad that Tesla's come out and is sort of proving all of these short sellers wrong. And also a lot of these car companies that were just like, no, we're not doing EV. Uh, it doesn't make sense, all this stuff. Obviously, Tesla has figured it out. Great batteries, great technology. I mean, there's still kinks to work out, but in the eyes of how old some of these car companies are, Tesla is still a startup in that space. And they're doing great things, great breakthroughs with their technology. Although sometimes I, I think they sort of release their technology a little bit too soon, like that Smart Summon. Uh, needless to say, there, there were a handful of issues there, maybe more than a handful of issues. But either way, very cool, very cool stuff. So I'm very excited to see what they, what I guess Elon and everybody else who talks on the conference call has to say. But the point is, they killed it on earnings. Uh, I was not expecting this. Otherwise, I definitely would have bought some calls. Um, I mean, we all know their production numbers did not hit 100,000. They came in at like 97,000-ish. Um, so still record, record production numbers, or record deliveries, sorry, record deliveries and maybe record production, but they clearly blew out of the water on profit and that's why they're skyrocketing right now. They were looking at that profitability number People were not expecting this. They were still expecting them to operate at a negative 42 cents per share loss. So I think we're gonna continue on the path, path of Tesla related news. Unplugged Performance, uh, they're a fairly well-known like aftermarket company that makes uh, body parts and full interior stuff for Teslas. Um, they've apparently come out with a body kit for the Model Y. So I guess they have a rendering of a planned body kit for the Model Y, and it actually looks pretty good, uh, I will say. Uh, if you haven't seen, they did a while back a Model S Apex-like version of the Model S, and it looks absolutely sick. It, it's, a, it's a wide body kit. I think it's like three inches wider than stock. Um, carbon fiber parts everywhere. Carbon fiber spoiler. Carbon fiber wheels, maybe? Uh, the interior is incredible alcantara uh like hand stitched leather with like diamond quilted patterns in it it, it looks absolutely awesome I'll, I'll throw some pictures up um but they they have all of these things even the model threes right now you can get uh body kits for that as well skirts uh front lips rear diffusers all that good stuff um you can get like springs to lower your car a little bit better handling all that good stuff but these renderings of the model y look pretty cool and and i'm thinking in the future like getting like a model 3 or model y potentially a performance model 3 and doing like a full build like wide body kit and that stuff that would be a really cool thing to see or potentially do but i kind of rather save my money for the roadster but either way um very cool stuff that they're coming out with uh the model s apex that they that they have is sick but i think you're pushing close to like 200 250 thousand dollars for the car and the whole package like installed. Uh, I think they start, some of the body kits start at like thirty to $50,000 because of all the carbon fiber that's in them. But either way, very cool stuff that they're doing. And uh, it is cool to see like the car community and car guys embracing this and create these parts for these cars. It's just a different driving experience. And uh, well, as much fun as you know, gas vehicles are with you know manual shifting, that exhaust note that they have, screaming V12s with the Lamborghinis. There is something to be said about the driving experience in a Tesla as well, and I, I think it's fun to enjoy the wide range of driving experiences that are available. And if you're a true car lover, I, I think you can get around the fact that there's something to be said about driving a Tesla. It's just a different experience. It's a unique experience, and and I think it's a very fun experience. And in, in addition to everything else that's out there, so um, either way. It's cool stuff that they're doing, and I can't wait to see what they come out with next. Some other very interesting news, I guess sort of regarding their, uh, you know, 
ability to not have repeatable performance, especially according to Porsche, that's what Porsche really goes after, is that Tesla has recently patented battery cooling technology that will be like in the batteries. So my understanding is it's kind of like a heat sink maybe with like extra, extra panels that can diffuse heat or let off heat. So more surface area for air to get around and cool and let heat escape. So this was very cool because it means that you can get more sustained performance out of the batteries without them overheating. It is exciting to see this, what they're coming out with, and it's continuing to push electrification of cars, better performance of cars, and uh, well, I can't wait to see the Roadster come out and be the halo of all cars. I mean, right now, you have cars, uh, what is it, the Koenigsegg Regera. It's like a single gear. It sounds very interesting if you've ever uh, heard it doing like a top speed run. It does sound very interesting because it almost sounds like you're starting in like fourth or fifth gear bogged down and trying to like floor it and it's like slowly ramping up. But yeah, it's interesting how it works. Koenigsegg is a very fascinating company. He is doing amazing things. Everything is built in-house. And uh, I, I think Christian von Koenigsegg is, is similar to what Tesla is to like electric cars to gas cars. So like you have Koenigsegg and Tesla and I think they're both doing amazing things. The coolest part is that Teslas are actually attainable, I guess, for me. Koenigsegg is a little out of reach, seeing as how they're well over like a million dollars for cars. Teslas, you can get to a Model 3. Granted, they're not anywhere near the same cars. Koenigseggs are absolutely fantastic works of arts. Uh, work of arts? Work of art? Works of art. There we go. <laughs> anyway, Koenigseggs, beautiful cars, awesome performance in those cars. And uh, well, you really can't beat it right now, but I am excited to see the Roadster come out and compete with some of these like multi-million dollar cars that are not only, you know, incredible to look at and artistically, but also the engineering that goes into these cars. Like Koenigsegg was the first to come out with these like hollow spoke carbon fiber wheels that everybody else said they couldn't do, and they did it. Um, same thing with their newest transmission. They made it smaller and more compact, but you can skip straight from like seventh gear to third gear if you just like floor it and bang on the shift lever, like it is, it's fascinating technology. They, they are doing fascinating things, um, really breakthrough things. And I think Tesla is trying to push that with electric cars and I applaud them for it. Same with Porsche even. They're pushing Tesla to focus on having repeatable performance, cooling these batteries, being able to do repeatable, you know, zero to 60 runs over and over, track these cars and, and help get these cars out there and that electric cars can truly be a sports car. Uh, and I think Porsche has been the first nod and acknowledgement towards, yes, they can be, and electric cars can compete in, you know, that same level. And I think that the new Plaid powertrain and the Roadsters are just going to continue on with that. So I think that's going to be it for Tesla Talk Wednesday. It doesn't have the same ring to it, but I appreciate you guys uh, checking out the channel. If you guys enjoying the content, please consider liking and subscribing. But until next time, thanks for watching.